At the end of its deliberations, the MPC voted unanimously to leave the policy repo rate unchanged at 4% and continue with the accommodative stance of monetary policy as long as necessary to revive growth, mitigate the impact of COVID-19 while ensuring that inflation remains within the target going forward. The marginal standing facility rate and the bank rate remain unchanged at 4.25%. The reverse repo rate also stands unchanged at 3.35%. In the MPC's assessment, global economic activity has remained fragile and in retrenchment in the first half of 2020. A renewed surge in COVID-19 infections in major economies in July has subdued, the, has subdued some early signs of revival that had appeared in May and June. Global financial markets, however, have been buoyant with return of risk of sentiment, inserting a disconnect from the underlying state of the real economy. The MPC noted that in India too, economic activity had started to recover from the lows of April and May. However, surges of fresh infections have forced reclamping of lockdowns in several cities and states. Consequently, several high frequency indicators have leveled off. Against this backdrop, the MPC was of the view that supply chain disruptions on account of COVID-19 persist, with implications for both food and non-food prices. A more favorable food inflation outlook may emerge as the bumper rubby crop harvest eases prices of cereals, especially if open market sales and public distribution offtake are expanded on the back of significantly higher procurement. Nonetheless, upside risks to food prices do remain. The abatement of price pressures in key vegetables is delayed and remains contingent upon normalization of supplies. Protein-based food items also could also emerge as a pressure point. High domestic taxes on petroleum products have resulted, have resulted in elevated domestic pump prices and will impart broad-based cost push pressures going forward. Taking into consideration all these factors, the MPC expects headline inflation to remain elevated in Q2 2021, but likely to ease in the second half, aided by favorable base effects. As regards the outlook for growth, the MPC noted that recovery in rural economy is expected to be robust, buoyed by the progress, progress in Kharif sowing. Manufacturing firms expect domestic demand to recover gradually from Q2 and to sustain through Q1 21-22. On the other hand, consumer confidence turned more pessimistic in July relative to the preceding round of Reserve Bank's survey. External demand is expected to remain anemic under the weight of global recession and contraction in global trade. Taking into consideration the above factors, real GDP growth in the first half of the year is estimated to remain in the contraction zone. For the year 2021 as a whole, real, rate, real GDP growth is also estimated to be negative. Uh, living with the pandemic has improved the way we manage it, working from home, virtual meetings and contactless transactions. Throughout this traumatic period, one thing has stood out, the indomitable spirit of humanity, the inner conviction that whatever be the challenge, we have the innate resilience to combat them, overcome them and emerge victorious. I continue to be an eternal optimist and I feel Mahatma Gandhi should inspire us and in Mahatma Gandhi's words, if our resolve is firm and our conviction clear, it would mean half the battle won, unquote. It is worthwhile to see who is benefiting from the RBI's actions. Borrowing costs in financial markets have dropped to their lowest in a decade on the back of abundant liquidity. Interest rates on instruments like the three-month treasury bill, commercial paper, and certificates of deposit have fully priced in the reduction in the policy rate and are in fact trading below the policy rate in the secondary market. Commercial papers of NBFCs have softened to 3.8% on July 31st. Rates have fallen to 3.4% 
on July 31st, 2020 for non-NBFC borrowers. So as you can see, the cost of borrowing for NBFC borrowers and non-NBFC borrowers have significantly come down. And the NBFC sector, which was in stress post ILFS throughout, you know, in the early part of 2019, have now access to funding at reasonable costs. Mm -hmm.